Canucks fans are thrilled. And they should be. This is they deserve this. This team was always too talented to play as shitty as it was. And now they're seeing some really, really great results. What I found hilarious going into the year, and it was overshadowed by Steven Stamkos walking into camp and going, uh, the GM didn't call me about the extension this summer and I'm pissed about it, was the back and forth, very passive aggressive between uh, Elias Pettersson and the Vancouver Canucks. And Pettersson is... Uh, People, the the Pedersen camp leaked out to the media, if you remember. Well, he's not sure that he wants to be here. He wants to wait and see. That was the wait and see. Why is that? Why is that? Wait and see. Okay. <sighs> then the Vancouver Canucks leak out to the press, the other side. They go, yeah, well, we're not even sure we want to sign him. How did they say it? We're not even sure we want to see him. And now he's about to find <laughs> out what it's like to get a multi-million dollar gun. A hundred percent. Now, Pedersen, a lot of people are looking at the Nylander deal and going, I mean, I, we know he's an RFA, but uh, what leverage could the Canucks possibly have? And here's the interesting part, too, is when they said that, they were saying that about a player who did something that Nylander's never done, scored a hundred points in a year last year. On a not good team. At the high end, uh, e you don't have the leverage. The team doesn't have the leverage. Yes. Our, generally speaking, and we talked about this earlier with Nick Robertson, who's like a fringe lineup guy, RFAs in that situation do not have leverage. Elias Pettersson is one of the top players in the National Hockey League. He has all the leverage. He's on pace for 110 points. That's pretty good. And isn't it interesting... That one of the top headlines on sportsnet.ca today is, we want to keep Petey here, says Canucks GM Alvin. Wow, no kidding. No kidding. Shocking. Oh, boy. Wow, none of us saw it coming. No. What? What? Po I just want to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Ask away. Little fingies. <laughs> what possible reason... <laughs> Would would they think that they're going to win that that publicity war? When when you say you make the statement, why did they make such a statement? Like, now nah, we're not even sure that we want him here in Vancouver. Like, what would the lotto line Jeff be? Jeff Blair with here? No, yeah, I know it's not a little. <laughs> it just it just <laughs> just smore me, you know. Yeah, but the yeah. the Canucks are in a no win situation because you have to give him whatever he wants, right? I think having that player on your team and paying them whatever you want that is a win situation. That's yes, the guy yes. you give every. Yes. You your, give your the win. Is, your win is that you get Pedersen. Yeah. What a privilege! So I guess that is the win. To be able to say I'm going to pay this guy twelve million dollars a year. Yeah. Because that's what I think it's going to be, RFA or not. I mean, how jacked were Pedersen and Reinhardt and everyone around them when Nylander signed his deal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and they should be. <laughs> they should be. I mean, okay, Nylander is on pace for more points than Pedersen. Pedersen has already scored over 100 points in his career, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, and can play in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's the key. He's a centerman. Reinhardt, to a lesser extent. What are, what, are, what are 100 point centermen worth in this league? Oh, let me have They're a They're really cheap. Oh, it's crazy. Nathan McKinnon. How much money does he make? Nothing. Dick. 12.6 million. What does Connor McDavid make on a contract that he signed four years ago? Oh, a lot longer than Five four years, years ago. ago what's and, he made? Uh, 12 and a half. That's right. 12 and a half. And, and Austin Matthews next year, what's he going to make? And he hasn't even scored 100 points yet. Uh, in my dreams, league men. Yeah, but in all honesty, he's going to be 13 and a half. 13 and a quarter. How oh, dare sorry, you? sorry, and a quarter. So I think it seems fairly simple. If uh, Willie is 11-5 and McKinnon is 12-5, Pedersen should be 12 or 12-2. Yeah, because they have the RFA thing. Yeah. However... So it's given 12 over 8. Right, because he's going to... But, but he won't want that. Here's the question. Yes. If you're Pedersen, do you sign... He's got the injury history. Do you sign the full 8-year deal or do no. you go the Matthews route where you go 3-4? to four? Yeah, yeah, there's so no way. Five. There's no way if I'm his agent, I would take an 8-year deal. Like, I want something that's like 4. Now... Four, mil, or let's, four years. Let's consider the following, and I understand consider that these players are not the same. Bill Nye, consider the following. These players are not in the same level as Pedersen. Let's go back to the Leafs' Cody Franzen. The Leafs <laughs> offered Cody Franzen a five-year, $25 million deal. Okay. He, he turned it down. Yep. He ended up in Buffalo. He played three more years, and that was the end of Cody Franzen in the NHL. Um, there was John Klingberg, who was offered $50 million by the Dallas Stars when he was uh, close to Norris Trophy winning. He was amazing. 
When he was at his best, he was amazing. People forget that. Mm -hmm. The fall of John Klingberg is what we tend to focus on. But he was great, and that's why the fall was so astonishing. John Klingberg turned down that money, and he had an injury history when he didn't sign that contract. Pedersen has been healthy the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. But if somebody says, hey, man, here's $100 million. Do you have... Do you not like physically have a physical reaction to going, no, nah, I'll take half of it. Thanks. I think <laughs> I think the way you started that statement is the how you should end it, like how you did before it's coming to full circle. Elias Pedersen isn't those players. Like Elias okay. Pedersen isn't Cody Franzen or John Klingberg. He'll be fine. He should take the the four five year deal and then get the next uh two hundred million dollar contract. You know? And he has been healthy the last two years. Yeah. Completely healthy. Eighty Nothing games and eighty games, and he's played forty two already this year. He's healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Can I I checked it out on Puckpedia. Um, Elias Pettersson's agent is Pat Brisson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I read you some of the friggin' contracts this guy has? Yeah, I go. <laughs> the top one is Nathan McKinnon. <laughs> Total value, $100.8 million. John Tavares. Total value, $77 million. Anze Kopitar, total value, 80 million. Seth Jones, total value, 76 million. Sidney Crosby, 104.4 million. This isn't necessarily current contracts. I think that's career earnings. Dylan Larkin, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Jack Hughes, Cole Caulfield, Quinn Hughes, Jason Robertson. Then you get to Elias Pettersson in terms of highest paid guys. Camp Fowler, Claude Giroux, who's made a billion dollars in his career. Um, Trevor Zegers, Anthony Mantha. This guy has the craziest lineup of any agent in hockey. So anyway, good luck with that. I'm sure it'll be a really easy negotiation and they'll take less like all those other guys on that list. Mm -hmm. Another guy who's easy to negotiate with is Alan Walsh. Yes. Super easy. Mm -hmm. um, Super. Doesn't advocate for his players at all. They uh, have Philip Ronick to figure out. Mm -hmm. Oh man! And the and the and the, here's the thing: the the Canucks, uh, like a lot of teams, are pressed against the cap. Now they haven't signed the big extensions like like the Leafs have. So you know Vancouver has currently an eighty six million dollar payroll. There's obviously LTIR space used, but um, next year doesn't get a lot easier. You got. You know, Ronick's a RFA. Myers is coming off the books and that sort of thing. But you, you got some, you got some work to do. You got work. 